Greetings and salutations, everybody, and welcome to the Canuck Podcast, the podcast done by fans for fans of everything nerdy. Once again, I am your host, Lord X, and joining me today, making his return back to the Canuck Podcast, <laughs> is Jester Kerr. Hi, right, boys and girls, how are you doing? How are you doing this week, Jester? Oh, better than I um, was last week. Skype's working again for the most part. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> that's good to hear. Now, unfortunately, this week, due to scheduling com- conflicts and work schedules, mm-hmm. Big Boss is unable to join us. Indeed, he is not, unfortunately. It's quite, it quite good with a third person to bounce some ideas off. Mm-hmm. Shame. It is. Uh, on the bright side, we might actually be under two hours this week, <laughs> given that we have nothing like the games of merch to go over. Hashtag BB slows us down. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean it. I didn't mean no. it, BB. <laughs> now, this week over, we do have a brand new segment for you all. Mm-hmm. Something that we may do from time to time. It's not guaranteed every week. Just when something really grabs us, Indeed. probably. And that, guys, is Trailer Talk. We've got a few big trailers that came out over the course of this last week. And mm-hmm. we're going to dive right into them. Uh, though I have in the notes here probably the biggest one first. Uh, <laughs> let's let's jump down to the uh, third one here, the top yeah. bit first. And that, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's the trailer for The Hangover Part 3 was released. Mm-hmm. And uh, it looks pretty good. It does, I must say. Uh, the first one, fantastic. The mm-hmm. second one, eh. Yeah. This one, though, does look like it's back on form somewhat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it doesn't look like an exact clone of the first exactly, one. Exactly, yeah. Like the second one was, pretty much. Mm. That but, was the big, the big failing of the second one. It was just too much of the same. Exactly. At least this one looks like it's going in a different direction. Yeah. Going back to some origins, you know, back to Vegas, and back to uh, is it Heather Smalls, is it? Yes, I do. She, she, she appears in the trailer. <laughs> so, you know, going back to some of the old, you know, the original jokes, which does work, but still, you know, bringing some new ideas to it as well. So it does look like it could be okay, but I'm not too excited. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me neither. I mean, I'll probably see it when it comes out, but mm. it's not one of those that I'm really excited to see. Yeah. All right, uh, Jester, you want to bring in our next one? You got your you of all people are going to let me introduce this one. Oh, well, that's okay. Yes, <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> For the audience's sake, what I'm referring to is our friend Lord X here is possibly the biggest Deadpool fan I have ever had the pleasure of meeting. So the fact that he's letting me introduce the Deadpool games, the ga- the ga- Deadpool game trailer is astonishing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't That's think I'd be able to say it without getting too excited, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> I've reached the peak far too soon. Uh, well, yeah, but okay, on, on the matter of astonishing, the game does look set to be fantastic. I mean, any game that has a character such as Deadpool being voiced by an actor such as Nolan North can only be fantastic, but it does look like it's set to be a rip-roaring time. Indeed, it looks just over-the-top crazy, insane, filled with explosions, (laughs) everything you would want from something that's Deadpool-related. Yeah, it kind of reminded me of sort of a, a Saints Row the Third outrageous guns and action kind of thing mm-hmm. but then some of the graphical bits of you know, when kind of reminded me of lollipop chainsaw as well yeah yeah, yeah. now that you mention it i, was, I can see yeah that. i was just quite, i was quite i was i was quite impressed with it to be fair mm-hmm. an odd mix of things but it seems to work yep and it gave a little more confirmation that we have cable in the game now which yeah. Brings back and his the best mind. dynamic ever that was seen in comic books yeah. in the uh, Cable and Deadpool series. Indeed. Never actually read that myself. Oh, unfortunately. <laughs> I, no, I keep, people keep telling me so, yeah. I will do one day. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. No, it looked to be fantastic. 
the only little gripe I had about the trailer is that we still don't have a confirmed release date for the game. Like, well, I'm choosing to look up on that as a good thing. Is it's a sign that it's a bit off yet, so they're mm-hmm. really trying to hammer it down, you know? Yeah. Well, given that it's being done by High Moon and their mm. games do usually release in the summer. Yep. So I'm betting on an August release for this one. I would say we'll hear more at E3 about it. Definitely. Mm-hmm. All right. And uh, going back into the realm of movies now, we got our next trailer for Iron Man 3. Oh, goody, goody. <laughs> which, if you were not excited for the movie before, holy crap on a cracker, you better be now, because... Yeah. What's wrong with you if you're not excited? Come on. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> but, and for those of, for those out there that don't want to hear anything about the trailer, I advise you to skip ahead right now, because we're... Spoiler alert. Yeah. That goes out to you, BB, because you yeah. don't want to talk about it this week. <laughs> Um, but we got to see, at the end of the trailer here, we got to see the big moment. Like, oh, yeah. it's, well, what we can assume is the final act of the movie. And, that seems so, yeah. and that is the introduction of the Iron Legion, which, to put it simply, is all of Tony Stark's armors coming to his aid. <laughs> Ah, uh, India. That was I was I watched the trailer the first time through, and I was thinking I was thinking stuff. Oh yeah, this looks, you know it's amazing. You know it's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. You know, already way up there in the excitement levels, and then that happened. It was like complete nerd mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Just to see all the different types of armor there. Yeah. Like, any fan of Iron Man could pick out like the space armor and <laughs> the stealth armor was there, but of course the big one came right at the end. Oh, the that Hulk was, Buster. Yes, the Hulkbuster. <laughs> it's oh, just to see that on a movie right now is so oh, fucking yes. awesome. <laughs> oh yes. Ah, <laughs> uh, this ah, uh, this there's just not enough I can say about this trailer because one of the other things that I'm really quite interested in as well is uh, Pepper Potts' role. Mm-hmm. She seems to be having uh, quite a big role in this one. Um, there yeah. Are, there are, it's, towards uh, the Mandarin seems to be doing something with the Super Serum project, perhaps? Mm-hmm. The same kind of similar kind of tech as you, you saw um, Captain America being latched into, and also Tim Roth mm-hmm. in the uh, Edward Norton Hulk film. Yep. It's slightly similar, so mm-hmm. that's, very, that's very interesting yep. to have seen. Well, we do know that the movie is going with the extremist storyline, so they're oh, going yes, to have the yeah. extremist formula in the movie, so it could be also, doing something like that. Plot, uh, you know, yeah. Just recently read the extremist arc as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it could be doing something with that. And also mm. in the trailer we gotta see a brief glimpse of Pepper in her underwear, so that was kinda oh, nice. Seems like about a red headed woman looking angry. <laughs> so it's probably pick out sexy when you say lingerie really. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's yeah. Carry on. <laughs> uh, another big thing about the trailer is we got a few more lines too from uh, Sir Ben Kingsley mm. as the Mandarin. This is possibly the one pet peeve I have about this trailer so far and how the film's shaping up. They they cast a fantastic British actor as the bad guy, mm-hmm. and they make him do an American accent. <laughs> well. Oh. Technically, <laughs> in the comics, the Mandarin was Chinese to begin with. Yeah, but he could have at least had him do a Chinese accent then. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> the thing they wanted, I think, that they said they wanted to do with him in the movie is he's not necessarily part of any kind of nation. So they uh, didn't nice. want to make him, like, specifically Chinese or specifically American or anything like that. In the give they it's quite heavily American but you can pick out bits and pieces where they kind of nod accentuation to to some of the things she, he says so yeah mm-hmm. I, could, I, could, I could see that that's a good point mm-hmm. they they've nailed the look with him though oh yeah definitely I mean that's it's pretty cool what they've done uh, can't wait to see him in action in the movie oh yeah 
so I doubt if we'll get ten magical magical rings. So. <laughs> yeah, because they do seem to be going, uh, at least in the Iron Man Zone series, they seem to be remaining quite, I don't want to say realistic, mm-hmm. but yeah. More science and tech based. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but we never know. There might be some kind of secret in there. Yeah, there's possibly a way of doing it science and tech wise anyway. I mean, you know, look at what they did with the Avengers. Mm-hmm. So. Yep. Who knows? Mm-hmm. And going back to like Iron Man 2, uh, well, we never got to see Whiplash in his armor until the movie was out, so. Mm-hmm. They do keep secrets from us. So. Ah, very true, yeah. Very true indeed. Mm-hmm. So who knows, maybe Iron Man was bringing in the Iron Legion to take on Fing Fang Foom, maybe. <laughs> well, that would be good. <laughs> oh, oh, do you remember when the rooms used to go around as well, that that was Fing Fang Foom in Avengers as well? Mm-hmm. That was really long, didn't it? Uh, yeah. So yeah, it would be good to see him in this one, yeah. Maybe, mm-hmm. maybe. Yeah, one can hope. Hmm. Okay, well, so we move on from trailers, may yep. as well. Sure we've thing. Tapped, we've tapped them dry now. Mm-hmm. Uh, first, and actually only big news story we've got this week, unfortunately, uh, is the report that Christian Bale is to return as Batman in the Justice League. Maybe. Sorry. Maybe. Good point, yeah. Maybe. Proviso there. Now, this maybe may give us a little bit of information on what the conditions are, because we know Christopher Nolan's involved as well as producer Mm -hmm. so it might not be the same batman maybe Mm -hmm. but it would seem quite odd if it wasn't Mm. so i i could imagine maybe it's like yeah christian bale batman has retired and handed off to joseph gordon levitt maybe batman or nightwing or whatever they were planning to do with that if they're gonna do anything who knows Mm -hmm. um maybe you know they drag him out of retirement it could be could be interesting at least yep it it could be um uh, well, as far as Nolan though, goes, uh, Latino Review, who first broke this story, they claim that uh, Nolan is now in charge of the entire DC yes. universe at Warner Brothers, uh, which, in hindsight, I am absolutely fine with. Oh, yeah, definitely. Because, uh, well, maybe not directing-wise, but if he's, like, overseeing everything... Yeah. Uh, he's got producer credit on Man of Steel, yeah. and that book's set to be actually a, a well done Superman movie which is mm-hmm. something you don't really quite expect to see these days you know it worked back in the day with uh, Christopher Reeves because it was mm-hmm. that little bit more campy in the 80s yeah. anyway. but, so it's good to see that this new one is being done potentially right mm-hmm. so yeah Christopher Nolan at the helm why not yeah, yeah. Uh, so the thing goes here is that we could be seeing uh Henry Cavell's Superman in mm-hmm. the same universe as Christian Bale's Batman. Quite possibly. Which, I don't, I'm not sure exactly how I feel about this. Yeah. Because the Superman universe that we're going to see looks like it's going to be completely different from the Batman universe that we've seen in the Dark Knight trilogy. You see, I'm not sure I agree with you there, because... My view of why I think this Man of Steel is going to be pretty good is because mm-hmm. it seems like Christopher Nolan's had, even as producers, had quite a heavy influence on their mood. You know, it's all quite you know gritty in the same way that Batman was. True. And even though you went into that Christopher ba- uh, Christian Bale Batman trilogy, and you were you were you know you went in knowing that this isn't quite a DC universe as we know it. This is Batman in a more realistic DC universe. Mm-hmm. Batman in the real world, technically. Yeah, yeah. So, but I could see how that could work if if it's introduced in a way that it's like Superman is the first instance of this real power Mm -hmm. beyond human that is suddenly introduced into the world, which seems to be what they're going to do, because Mm -hmm. they're putting a big, big emphasis on what he is, or who he is, really, rather than what he can do. I'm not sure if I've really... (laughs) The <laughs> voice what I'm thinking very well there, but yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a lot less emphasis on action. Superman flies around beating this guy out, and he's a hero of everyone. There's more who psycho- psychology to so There's more who Superman is. Mm, true. In a way, yeah. I guess it's almost like an, 
a modern version of E.T., maybe? <laughs> yeah. That's not a bad way of looking at it. We'll, I guess we'll see. <laughs> Uh, the one question remains about Superman here. Are we going to see him as Clark Kent <laughs> in the new uh, movie? Because the way they're going, it doesn't look like we're going to see, like, a uh, mild-mannered reporter <laughs> oh. come about. But they might do well to skip over that bit, because that bit kind of does just add inevitable campiness of mm. seeing that nerdy guy with his glasses and his slick-back hair and all that. Bull. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is true, but in some ways that's kind of what makes Superman kind of relatable. That's true, but they, they, they managed to get success out of Smallville, so maybe they'll go that kind of route now they've, you know, had the success from Smallville as well. Oh, true, true. Where they just kind of skip past the newspaper stuff, or at least, you know, the glasses nerdy newspaper stuff and do mm-hmm. it like he's just a strong farm boy. Yeah. You know, uh, to work. That's true, that's true, yeah. Either way, it's going to be interesting to see if they can actually make something work after, like, all of the talks that came mm-hmm. about, like, the Justice League movie was being, the script for it was terrible and whatnot, mm. because I'd love to see it work. I mean, I would love to see a Justice League movie on screen. Yeah. Like, we've yes. talked about this before. Yeah. If they can make it work, like, especially with Nolan at the helm... Like, they can't go the same route as Marvel. They cannot go, like, the mm. super happy, joyful <laughs> kind of <movie. laughs> All they, this comic relief kind of stuff, yeah. They're yeah. going to have to try and stay clear of that, I'd imagine, yeah. Mm-hmm. Especially if they're going to have Christian Bale Batman. Yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully we can understand them if they do bring him back. <laughs> yeah. I'm Batman! <laughs> <laughs> that was probably better than his, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah, like, I mean, we could see, like, kind of a Watchmen vibe, maybe. Oh, yeah. Hey, that's a good point. Mm-hmm. I'd yeah. enjoy that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'd kind of be okay with Bale coming back as Batman, but I don't know. I'd probably like to see somebody new being introduced. That's just, yeah. though. I don't know. I think it could work. Mm-hmm. Well, time will tell. Mm-hmm. All right, so uh, that's our big news story this week, and, well, we've gotten through that pretty quickly. Indeed. Well, I suppose there wasn't really much to say. No, no, yeah, it was a really slow week. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, move into our sub-stories here, which we might actually get some more discussion out of some of these. Mm. Well, we usually do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, first of which, uh, we've got some more... X-Men Days of Future Past news, mm-hmm. and that is that Halle, Be- Halle Berry is coming back to reprise her role as Storm. Indeed. Which I am absolutely fine with. Yeah, I suppose of all the things that, that I do have complaints of in this film from previous podcasts, the audience knows, uh, this one doesn't really bother me that much. She was she was a good Storm. Mm-hmm. Definitely was. And mm-hmm. she pulled out a leather suit quite well. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) Uh, I wonder, like, how big of a role she's going to have, though. Well, with so many people being in it, mm, I can imagine that it's going to be less of the kind of film that has individuals as as stars, as, you know, the big characters, and more as as teams being the characters. Mm Mm-hmm. Perhaps. Well, who knows? We might just get a small cameo or something from her. Maybe. Maybe. Really wasn't confirmed from Brian Singer, like, how much of a role she's going to have. Mm. Um, yep. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder who else they're going to bring back, though. Well, have they had any more luck with the the fellow that played uh, Nightcrawler? Do we have we heard anything more about him? Uh, I don't think so, no. Mm. I'd be, be surprised. He's mm-hmm. not really done much of anything recently. No, not at all. I think of anyway, yeah. That would be nice. Ah. He was a great nightcrawler. <laughs> oh, he was a very, he was a fantastic nightcrawler. He really was. Eh, I guess we'll see. Yep. Moving swiftly on. Uh, now, this is actually uh, something that doesn't really affect me that much. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm introduced to it anyway. Uh, in Best Buys, which can tell you, only really exist over there. <laughs> <laughs> Wii U purchases are coming with a £20 gift card. 
20 pounds, 20 dollar gift card. <laughs> you see, you see what I mean? Card. Yeah, well, it, it'd be better off if you did get a 20 pound gift card, you'd end up with more. <laughs> um, <laughs> with, we purchasers come with a 20 dollar gift card at Best Buy's. Now, I can't really weigh in on this one, but yeah, it sounds like a good deal to me. Yeah, it's a good deal. Uh, I included this one on the list just because I thought it was actually quite amusing in a way. Yeah. It's like the Wii hasn't been doing that well, and maybe yeah. that's Best Buy's attempt to get rid of some stock. Yeah. And I suppose, if nothing else, we're giving people some information for them to go out and get a bargain. Well, air quotes, bargain, maybe. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah, Twenty dollars gift card from Best Buy. But no, yeah. I think. yeah. But you're absolutely right. You know, the Wii U has not sold as well as a lot of people expected it to, and a lot of owners of Wii U's are actually quite surprised that it's not sold so well. I mean, I'm going to quote uh, Bernie Burns over at Rooster Teeth in particular. Uh, can't understand at all why the mm-hmm. Wii U hasn't sold because he's got one and he loves it. Mm-hmm. And that's 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 Bernie Burns who's I mean, as much as I love the guy for what he does, he's not exactly happy, happy, joy, joy all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, from there everything I've heard and, like, from people I've talked to and everything, it's, well, not uh, talked to directly, but I've heard talk about the Wii U. It's a great piece of hardware. It's, it's just yeah. Nintendo hasn't put out anything for the system. That's, that's the big problem, it seems to be, yeah. Uh... Because uh, last week when me and Big Boss went over the games of merch, and there was a shit ton of games for merch, yeah. there was two Wii U exclusives, and one of them was a remake. <laughs> so <laughs> That's just Nintendo all over, though, in the last few years. Last couple of decades. <laughs> God. Yeah. But they, Nintendo, really need to good E3 this year and like yeah. to bring out some games this year. Yeah, one thing I'd really like to see from Wii U is they're quite buried in the series series, 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 series they already have. Mm-hmm. I'd like to see something new. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they do do new stuff as well. Mm-hmm. And they do some quite obscure stuff, you know, being a Japanese company and all that kind of thing. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I'd just like something you know, New. <laughs> yeah. I was hoping that was what um, uh, Zombie U was going to be the, the beginning of. Mm-hmm. Ramped up for that, and then it came out, and I heard all these bad reviews, and I was like, oh, well, never mind then. Mm-hmm. So, so I've you know. heard good things about that one as well. It's probably one of their good exclusives at the moment. Yeah, I've heard mixed reviews, and that's the problem. It's like, it's, it's good for all these things, but it's bad for all these mm-hmm. things. And it, it, was, I, it didn't enamor me enough to bother thinking about buying a console, the console anyway. Yeah, that's the thing too, like, I'm kind of interested in the Wii U, but mm. there's no games out there that I yeah. want to buy for it, for it. Yeah, you said it, you said it already, yeah, exactly the point, yeah. Um, On the well, line. they've got some things down in the pipeline, like the next Smash Brothers, I'm interested in that. Series they already have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> that's the thing about Nintendo series, yeah. though. They may be the same, but they're Still awesome every time. Yeah, that's true. They do have lasting power. It's fair enough. Yeah. But they need to maybe revive some of their older franchises. Like, mm-hmm. we haven't seen a Metroid game in so long. Oh, God, it, yeah. It totally skipped over the Wii U. I think mm-hmm. so. I think there was, what, one? Yeah, we had other M, I think, on the Wii U. That was it. Uh, maybe Prime 3, I can't remember. That might have been a GameCube, though. Um. I can't think of stuff in my head. Yeah, I can't either. But we haven't seen a new Metroid in a while. Um, Star Fox has, like, disappeared right off the radar. Yeah. Um, I think the very last thing he was in was actually a Super Smash Bros., wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. That was, like, the first thing he'd actually been in in a while. Because mm-hmm. his last game, I think, was on the uh, GameCube, Star Fox yeah. Adventures, I'm pretty sure. I think so, yeah. Well, did, did they not have any of the... Uh, the old ones rebooted for the handhelds? Uh, I don't remember hearing Star Fox about 64 was put it on the 3DS, a remake. That doesn't, that doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> but, it's a good yeah. game, but I mean, you know, it's nothing new. So that's mm-hmm. it exactly, just the remake. Yeah. But they're, they've got so many good franchises that they haven't used, like 
Kirby mm. as well. Gotcha. He, had, he had one game on the Wii U, ah, the Wii, uh, Kirby's Epic Yarn, which I heard mm. nothing but good things about, but again, yeah, nothing so far. <laughs> oh, well. Maybe with mm. E3 coming up in the, the competition from the new consoles, maybe, maybe they'll just be forced to step up the game, who knows. Mm-hmm. Or maybe they've been saving it to mm-hmm. compete, maybe, I don't know, because I suppose... Well, I was going to say that whole the whole Rayman um, debacle. Mm-hmm. I was going to say maybe that's competing. Well, that's not competing. That's giving yeah. in. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Um, I mean, uh, was it last month or the month before they held a, a Nintendo Direct and they talked about the Wii U and things coming for the Wii U? Mm. They made a, the announcement that a new Zelda is in the works. Uh, there's a new 3D Mario in the works. Akin mm-hmm. to like Mario 64 and Galaxy, which fantastic. Yeah. Um, there's another RPG coming out for it from the makers of Xenoblade Chronicles, which mm-hmm. absolutely looked beautiful. They did look beautiful, yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, personally for me, uh, one game that <laughs> really interested me was Shin Megami Tensei Cross Fire Emblem. Like. That? You may as well be speaking Japanese to me, X, and I have a feeling you probably are. <laughs> <laughs> I am a little bit, yes. <laughs> well, you've seen the Persona series, right? Uh, here and there, yeah. Yeah, well, that's Shin Megami Tensei. Ah, okay. Yeah, so those guys cross Fire Emblem, so that has potential, and that might be a system seller for me. <laughs> maybe, maybe. But, yeah. Probably not so, for me, but, you know. <laughs> But Nintendo really needs to step up their game, especially mm. with the, the PlayStation 4 and the next Xbox coming out soon. Yeah, definitely. So they need... Sure, their hardware is not even on par right now with the PS3 or 360. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely not going to be the same with the next generation of consoles. Mm. They need to put out hardware there. That's where they need to sell their system. They really do. So hopefully we get something from them soon. <laughs> Can only hope, yeah. All right, <laughs> I think that's enough uh, talking yeah. about Nintendo. Uh, we it's just so to... demoralizing to actually talk about. It, you know <laughs> what I mean? It's like you just you, you, you get stuck in all the details. And it's like, oh Nintendo. Yeah. <laughs> I love you, but come on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, so much of my childhood. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, let's move on to our next little story here, which is a uh, a brief little mention, which uh, there's a lot of people these days, like, leaving studios and retiring and everything. And yet again this past week, we've got another guy that's retiring. And that is uh, Jason West of Respawn Entertainment. Mm -hmm. And formerly the co-creator, I believe, of Infinity Ward. So, one of the fathers of Call of Duty has uh, retired. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, uh, well, probably made a bombshell if it's not a Call of Duty. Uh, it's <laughs> got, a, got a nice uh, package to retire on. Mm-hmm. <sighs> well, I don't know about that, giving <laughs> fallout from Infinity Ward and whatnot. Ah, well, true, yeah. But, uh... Yeah, he has now retired, and the article on Polygon, I believe, mentioned that it was due to family reasons, so... Oh. Yeah. So, best of luck to Jason West. Indeed, uh, yeah. Hopefully he does well, and uh, mm-hmm. who knows, maybe one of these days we'll see him return and put out another fantastic game. Mayhaps. Family troubles, nobody likes them. No. My thoughts are with him. Mm-hmm. All right, uh... Now you've got our uh, next yep. story, Jester. Moving on, and I chose this one specifically because of uh, my rant about <laughs> Jason Momoa. Last time we were talking about this, uh, Batista is uh, possibly being <laughs> cast as Drax the Destroyer. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, I'm not a particular big wrestling fan myself, but I do know of Batista. You know, back when I was young enough to still be into wrestling with my brother who's in, who is into it. I kind of, you know, I didn't grow out of it, that's the wrong thing to say. Mm-hmm. But I just sort of, you know, I gained other interests. Yeah, I don't mind him. He's, he's, he's a big guy, he's strong, obviously, and I've seen him in a couple 
couple of things. And he's not a terrible actor, you know, he's, mm-hmm. he's on par with The Rock, at least. Uh, although, actually, The Rock has improved over the years. Yeah. Um, he's like an early starting rock. <laughs> yeah, he's an early starting rock, exactly, yeah. So, we might yet see him in things like Race to Witch Mountain and such. Mm-hmm. Soon, soon, like, so who knows. Be cool, he was good in that. Anyway, uh, getting off topic here. Uh, Batista <laughs> as Drax the Destroyer in Guardians of the Galaxy, because Jason Momoa has backed out, I believe, on dispute of his weight, uh, of his... Um, salary. Eh? Salary, yeah. is the one. Uh, so Batista looks like he may be taking a role. Nah, I suppose, given the role of Drax the Destroyer, I don't mind. Mm-hmm. I suppose, you know, he's, I suppose he's the right kind of guy. I never saw... The man with the... Was it the Iron Fists, was yep. it? Yep. Never saw it. But I heard it was okay for what it was. It was, it was a good movie, yeah. Yeah. And uh, Batista, he did a pretty good job in the role. I mean, he didn't have too many lines, which was probably mm-hmm. a good thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, he looked apart. I, I can see him playing Drax, I mean... Yeah. Probably pain. won't have to worry about whether he's going to keep dreadlocks or not. Yeah. <laughs> Just paint them green, that's all you gotta do. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so, who knows, uh, Batista might be a decent role for this. I mean, I can't see Drax having, like, too many well Shakespearean lines for the movie, so... Uh, he's probably just gonna be, like, a hack-and-slash character for the most part, perhaps, yeah. Yeah, so... This could work. <laughs> it could work, it could work, yeah. Given the rest of the cast, like, being what we think it's going to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See yeah. him slotting in quite well. Mm-hmm. And I mean, well, Batista's probably not going to want thousands of dollars anyway. <laughs> no, no. He'll probably just be, like, overjoyed for being in the movie. <laughs> yeah. Because it's got a pretty, pretty big title for him. Yeah, definitely. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, that's is what I don't get about Jason Momoa. Like, I yeah. love the guy. I have loved him in the oh, roles yeah. that he's done. But he's not, like, a big actor. No, I suppose he's, I suppose he's, maybe his ego has been a bit inflated with the whole success of Game of Thrones, perhaps. Yeah, but even then, it was, he was just in the first season. That's, oh, that's true. So, like... <laughs> oh, yeah, good point, yeah. Good. Well, God knows then. Because, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know. He's getting a little too greedy, I think, maybe, but... Yeah, it's a bit of a prima. Mm-hmm. But just a note to say, nothing has been confirmed yet, so... Mm-hmm. We don't oh, well, know. <laughs> we're just pushing. <laughs> yeah. Crossing our fingers. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's also a note to mention that in this article about Batista, there was a mention of another actor. Indeed. Mm-hmm. And that's uh, Kevin Dur- Duran? I think it's Durand, Dur- yeah. Duran, Dirt, whatever. Uh, of Lost and X-Men Origins Wolverine fame. Ugh, groan. Is also reportedly in talks for an unknown role in the movie. Oh, I quite like him as an actor. I do too. I mean, yeah. I, in the last uh, Resident Evil movie, I thought he played a fantastic Barry. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I can see that. I've not seen the last, most recent one yet, but I can definitely see that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, I'm kind of happy he's in there. I've enjoyed him in his roles. Yeah, even as Blob, he was pretty good. Yeah, I was, I was just thinking that myself. In, in an otherwise mediocre to poor film, he was a or, good Blob. There is no mediocre there. It's, it's just... <laughs> well, everybody knows I'm easy to please when it comes to cinema. As long as I can sit through it and see things either getting killed or maimed or blown up or something, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, for the most part, you know. But no, he is a fantastic actor. I've, I've loved pretty much every role I've ever seen him in. So, so the uh, question I've is, so, uh, who's he going to play? Or who could play. he play in Guardians of the Galaxy? Well, this is a question. I mean, who, 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 who could he possibly play? I mean, uh, I can't see him being Rocket Raccoon, obviously. No. I, I can't see that happening. But mm-hmm. I suppose he could. I could imagine him doing the voice for Groot, perhaps. Mm, yeah, I could see that. But he's kind of got the voice however, for it. Yeah, he's got the voice for it, yeah. Even if the only line is, it's, I am Groot. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but knowing the roles he usually does, he's usually the bad guy's muscle kind of character. 
mm-hmm. more recently. So yeah, maybe it's just going to be something something to do with the villains, the the the, the, the bad that they're facing, perhaps. Oh, true enough, or, he might be a uh, henchman of Thanos, maybe. Yeah. Although I can't really think off the top of my head anybody specific that that could lend in to, so... Mm, yeah, me neither. My nope. knowledge of the uh, space part of the Marvel Universe is kind of limited. Mine's, mine's sketchy for the most part, but I uh, know bits and pieces. I'm still I'm not quite grasping anything in it, at, at least, so yeah, who knows. I'm sure we'll find out soon. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. Um, I've got our next little story here, and we all know this game is coming. But uh, EA, well, they sent a little invite recently, and uh, it hints at a Battlefield Four reveal. Woo! Now, if it's, <laughs> it requires you to be online at all times, <laughs> I'm sure people will. <laughs> Disregard it so quickly. Probably. <laughs> oh. And I've uh, I've not really um, latched on to it, so it doesn't really grab me that much personally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I played three. It was good for the most part, <laughs> but yeah, I'm I'm excited to see what it's going to look like at least. Oh, well, yeah. Especially if it's uh, coming to next-gen consoles. Mm-hmm, indeed. I mean, we might actually get to see a Battlefield PC version on a console. <laughs> oh, yeah. Fair point. Now, when you actually say they sent out an invite, what do you mean by that? Um, let me just uh, double-check the article here. I think it was an invite to some kind of event. Ah, uh, okay. Because I was... I was Trying to, uh, I, d- I didn't read up on this particular story because I knew you were going to field it, and I had no mm-hmm. particular specific interest. So I thought, you know, you're explaining it to me as good a yeah. discussion as good a discussion as any. Mm-hmm. But the word invite made me think beta almost instantly. Oh, okay, uh, yeah. I knew that probably wasn't going to be the case. Yeah, uh, this is what uh, the IGN, IGN article had to say. EA is teasing an announcement at this month's Game Developers Conference. In an invitation sent to IGN, EA reminds potential attendees to save the date and advertises an event on March 26th at a movie theater. Uh, so like it's probably going to be some sort of press reveal, I suppose. Yeah, and this is like, the invitation is actually seen in the article here, and... It has the same, like, font style and color representation that Battlefield 3 had. So, mm. that's what they're kind of assuming. Yeah, fair enough, yeah. Possibly, quite possibly just sort of a press reveal then, I suppose, yeah? If, there's an inv- if the invitation was actually sent to IGN. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Apparently, the game has been seen, I believe. Um, let me just check here. I thought the article mentioned that as well. Yeah, given that Battlefield 4 was recently shown to retailers and has yet mm-hmm. to see an official announcement, this could be where EA finally reveals the sequel. Yeah. Interesting that it happens so close to E3 again. Mm-hmm. A lot of people seem to be doing this. It's a very interesting tactic. Yeah. But it's... More and more people seem to be doing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess they want to just get it announced before it's inevitably leaked before E3 anyway. Yeah. True. <laughs> Very true. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, you uh, have our well, yeah, one. speaking of uh, game releases, or I suppose, release is a loose term in this case, mm-hmm. uh, Minecraft, you all know and love it on PC, the boys and girls, even those of you that would deny it, you know in your heart of hearts that you love it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's on Xbox as well, and we all love it there too. Uh, Minecraft may be coming to PlayStation devices. Yay! Uh-huh, yeah, you see, isn't it? Um, but Wii U, unlikely. <laughs> <laughs> Another kick to the nuts of Nintendo. Isn't it? The, the Nintendo. Um, it's, ah. Uh, well, anyway. Uh, lead designer, uh, I assume that must be Notch, or Hell Notch, uh, mm-hmm. has revealed that uh, Minecraft could come to PlayStation devices. This would be, I assume, 
obviously the main devices, uh, the main console rather, sorry, and also handheld devices. And we know that can work because you can actually use it on, I believe, iOS mm-hmm. devices. Is it, is it coming to Android yet? I'm not sure. I think uh, it's only uh, iOS at the minute. I think it might be on Android as well. Is it? Okay. Yes, yeah, Minecraft Brilliant. Pocket or whatever it's called. Ah, uh, yes, because I think that's the same one that's on our iOS Minecraft Pocket, yeah. So, um, so, yeah, so it could be coming to handheld devices as well, obviously. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's quite conceivable, to be fair. And I am a fan. I don't have a handheld PlayStation device, but if Minecraft is coming to it, I may get one. <laughs> <laughs> Just for that. Mm-hmm. I would be interested to see as well if you're going to be, use, be able to use the same account or if you're going to have to use a different account because the version that's on Xbox is actually quite different to the version that's on PC. So, mm-hmm. who knows? Uh, I can see it being like maybe crossed by with the uh, PS3 and Vita if it comes out. Or, well, no, yeah, yeah. PlayStation 4 and Vita if it comes out. Well, I could imagine they could probably do it to both consoles because it's not incredibly demanding. Mm-hmm. So... It could quite easily just be on both. Yeah. Uh, this really makes me interested, uh, especially if it came to the PlayStation 4. Mm-hmm. Uh, just thinking about the share feature again with that. Oh, yeah. Because that would be really fun. Like, you build something amazing. Like, hey, share. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Boom, share it. And also, you've just reminded me as well, that when we were talking about the... That, uh, the... Uh, the, I keep forgetting this word. The presentation of the sculptures mm-hmm. with the move controller. Yeah. It actually intrigues me now how that could be used while building in Minecraft if you're going to build for purely artistic purposes. Ooh. Ah. Good point, yeah. I, I could actually see the move working quite well with Minecraft. Yeah. So imagine so having using, to... <laughs> yeah. Instead so of using controller, you could actually be... <laughs> the miner <laughs> just standing there swinging your move controller <laughs> every tool you've got in your on your inventory slot I, 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 that's I, I'm actually that's actually probably the best function for a move controller I've ever heard of <laughs> <laughs> well I just imagine somebody just standing there in their living room right now just waving the move controller why yeah. not getting through this piece of stone <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, plastic pickaxe. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm quite, I'm quite intrigued by this. I would very much like to see Minecraft come to PS3, mm-hmm. and if it does come to the handhelds as well, I'd be well on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd love it on the Vita. That'd be a great game to have on the go. Mm. Easy to pick up and play. That's for sure. Definitely. Yep, uh, so that's the Minecraft news here. Um, we got a bit more movie news coming up right now. And the first of which is something that I'm extremely excited for. Uh, we've got some more Anchorman 2 news. And Anchorman 2, it's going to be a fantastic movie already. <laughs> oh, yeah. But the news came out this week that it just became even more epic. <laughs> and that is the fact that Harrison Ford is now going to be in Anchorman 2. <laughs> it does uh, look like it's going to be just brilliant. Mm-hmm. I'm interested to see what kind of role Harrison Ford is going to be in. Yeah. Apparently he's going to be playing a uh, legendary news reporter. Yeah, I thought that was going to be it, yeah. <laughs> uh, possibly not the same character he played in, what was that movie, Morning Glory, I think. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm assuming they will make some kind of connection to that. Oh, yeah. They'll probably have some sort of callback, yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, this is great news, I think. Mm. Harrison Ford's awesome. The first Anchorman is probably one of my favorite movies of all time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, the first one. I I, I, can't, I haven't seen it for a long time. Mm-hmm. No, no particular reason it just hadn't come up. Uh, when I did actually finally see it, I kept saying to myself, why haven't I seen this? <laughs> it was a fantastic film. Mm-hmm. So I'm very much excited for the second one. Oh, me too. Me too. And it's coming out later this year, I believe. It is. I mean, it's been seasoning yep. long enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Things are looking good for Anchorman 2. It is. Mm-hmm. 
And now on the topic of things not looking good. Oh, God, more movie news, but not of the good kind, boys and girls. Well, maybe of the good kind. I mean, it's quite funny. Oh, yeah. I mean, I know I kind of am in my head, while the rest of my body is in pain. (laughs) Uh, Two weeks ago, last time I was on the podcast, uh, we were talking about how Megan Fox had been cast in the... In Michael Bay's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles film, can I just say Michael Bay's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Sounds wrong. Um, <laughs> and as April O'Neil, and that seems to have been confirmed now, as Peter Laird, TMNT co creator, has actually slammed her involvement. Now, I actually want to just directly read his quote because it pretty much says it all. So, from the mouth of Peter Laird himself. My only exposure to Megan Fox as an actress is through her role in two Transformers movies and the wretched, but happily forgettable, Jennifer's Body. It may not be fair to judge her range of acting skills just from those three movies, but I think it is safe to say that there are probably hundreds of better choices for the role of April O'Neil. Amen. Of course, her name has promotional value, and maybe that's what they want. Who knows? I can't get myself too worked up about it. Now, that's the end of the quote, and... I can't agree more. I just can't yeah. agree. More. I mean, I don't mind Megan Fox in certain roles where she keeps her mouth shut and looks pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Leans over a motorcycle or over the open bonnet of a car. If people in America, bonnet is a hood. Um, it's just don't make her April O'Neil. Mm. Megan Fox is April O'Neil. Good God! <laughs> it's a person's mind to think that it's a good idea. <laughs> uh, but the only good thing that come, would, could come out of it is if she's wearing a yellow leather jumpsuit like the like in the original cartoon, and she's got shit on a cleavage going. That's the only good side I can think of it. But that's not. That actually, probably will happen. Actually, having said that. Yeah. Same <laughs> point. No. <laughs> or, yes, I agree with Peter Laird. Ah. Good God. <laughs> <laughs> totally agree with you as well. Uh, Alright, before we <laughs> totally kill ourselves with disgust here, uh, yeah. let's move on to something a little more happy. <laughs> a lot yes. more happy, really. A lot happy, yeah. And that is that uh, it came out in an interview... Uh, with Josh Whedon, he confirmed that Agent Coulson is returning from the dead in S.H.I.E.L.D. Mm-hmm. There is no holograms, there is no life model decoys or androids or whatever. Agent Coulson is coming back from the dead in the S.H.I.E.L.D. TV series. Well, when they say coming back from the dead... <laughs> <laughs> It has been as it has been revealed. It has been established that he did die. Yep. The Avengers movie. So mm-hmm. the prequel. Yep. But still, who cares? It's still Coulson coming back. <laughs> exactly. So and it's still good enough for me. Some more Agent Coulson in our lives. Yeah. But I mean, there is one bit, little bit of sad news in the in the fact that he is now actually dead, as far as the film continuity goes. Mm-hmm. So you're not going to see him in any more movies. Oh, we don't put that yet. Yeah, good point. Unless they decide to bring him back at some point in holograms or whatever. Mm -hmm. Because, who knows? But it doesn't seem foreseeable just yet. Mm -hmm. Uh, Well, the thing is, though, that uh, the S.H.I.E.L.D. TV series does take place after the Avengers movie. And it is... (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's the big question around, like... How are they bringing him back from the dead? But, but, but having read the article earlier, I read this one, so I'm very intrigued. Mm-hmm. They have established that Coulson did die, and yep. that Fury did not. Mm-hmm. Oh. oh, I see. As in, he actually comes back from the dead. Yeah. Right. I... Sorry, now you see, I got completely thrown by that statement, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> I didn't even realise it until now. Okay, yeah, my apologies. Okay, yeah, fair enough. Mm-hmm. So the oh, question okay. is, like, how are they going to go about doing this? Hmm. I, I mean, in the Marvel Universe, people have come back from the dead quite oh, yeah. often. 
That's very true. Mm-hmm. But uh, all the ones, that, all the all the main big ways I can think of, would be very tricky to introduce into uh, uh, the current film continuity we've got going. Similarly to how we said about um, introducing too much magicy stuff to the Iron Man film. Yeah. Um, but uh, who, who yeah. knows? Mm-hmm. So, so like we say, it's definitely not a live model decoy. It's definitely not a hologram. It seems mm-hmm. to be. Yep. It's definitely him. Him. So it's got to be resurrected somehow. Mm-hmm. Good point. Yep. So hopefully, yeah. Uh, Shield. In it. Mm-hmm. So hopefully Shield does uh, pass the uh, what can we call it um, the first episode pilot. My oh, pilot, yeah, pilot yeah. season coming up soon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So hopefully it will pass that, and uh, the network will pick it up, and we will mm-hmm. find out how we get Agent Coulson back. Indeed. And guys, that does it for our news section this week. Yeah, not slim pickings this week. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully. What we did have was good news, though. Mm-hmm. Most of it. Yep. Yeah, except for Megan Fox. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but hopefully next week we'll have some more big news stories to talk about. All right, so let's go into our next section: our been playing, been watching, and been reading section. Mm-hmm. And well, we've got a. Decent variety here this week. Yeah, for the most part. I mean, my pattern's still pretty solid at the minute. But yeah. <laughs> All right, well, why don't you take it away with one of your yeah. selections? Okay, well, uh, recently uh, I've been playing. Uh, well, you can see it on my Let's Play channel. I may as well tell you them all. On my Let's Play channel, I'm obviously still doing Borderlands 2 and Prince of Persia, Sands of Time. But I just let you guys know, at this point, of my recording of Sands of Time is finished now. Yay! Yeah, I have completed the game. It was incredibly nostalgic and in a good way. It was brilliant. And now I'm really glad because it means that tomorrow and the day after because I've got two days off work, woo, um, I can start on Warrior Within, the second one, which is by far and away probably my favourite of the series. Mm-hmm. Fantastic game. Because of this. The Never did beat that game. one. So again? I said I've never actually beaten Warrior Within. <laughs> oh, well, I, just, I don't blame you. Um, <laughs> that's so good. It's fantastic. Oh, it's, it's just it's just how the mood so drastically changed from the first one, and yet it still fits. <laughs> it seemed like a logical progression still because everything that happened in the first one. <laughs> hey, so, oh, it was by far and away my favourite of the series. So I'm starting on that tomorrow and the day after. So. Watch this space. That's going to be epic. Mm-hmm. Uh, as for me, one of my uh, first selections this week, which isn't shameless self-promotion, <laughs> uh, I actually picked up the new Tomb Raider game, and I've been uh, playing through that. And my first impression so far is that the game is absolutely beautiful. Oh, yes, it does look so. Mm-hmm. Uh Gameplay-wise, it's been great so far. For those of you worried that there was going to be a lot of quick time events, there's not. Mm. <laughs> I've only... see, personally, I don't mind them. Yeah, I don't either. Uh, but mm. there's not a whole lot, and that's good. Uh, if anything, the game reminds me a lot of the Uncharted series. Hey. Oh. What? Uh, I was just saying, yeah. Hey. <laughs> okay, it's saying like we or something like that. But, <laughs> That's our thing. <laughs> yeah. But uh yeah, it reminds me a lot like that, but with a much, much darker tone to it. Mm. But you get those moments where like something where she finally succeeds at something and you get that like epic feeling moment which is uh, uh, great. Um I will say one thing though. Uh, if there has ever been a character in video game history that has been plagued by Murphy's Law, it is definitely <laughs> Laura Croft in this game. Yeah. Because that point. if she isn't getting whacked over the back of the head or tied up or getting her leg stuck in a bear trap, she's having a plane crash, <laughs> like, right in front of her, <laughs> or she's getting shot at by a bunch of people, or <laughs> she's almost getting caught on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Anything can happen. I think at one point it's cave collapsing around her and all this. Yeah, so. no, that's true. God. If anything bad can happen to her, it has so far. 
<laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, the game, uh, nothing bad to say about it so far. I've been enjoying every minute of it. Uh, yeah. With the concerns of that, it could be a little too violent and whatnot, and, like, unjustified violence, but so far, no. Uh, any little instance where <laughs> she's actually killing a group of people makes sense. Uh, yeah. You can get some, like, speech from her as well where you can tell she's not enjoying what she's doing. Mm. So, all right. Well, this game, when sorry, just, just to ask one more question about it. This game, when it was first announced, was plugged as, you know, the, the bow and arrow is a big feature. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Along with a bunch of other games that came around at the same time, Crisis 3 being the most notable yeah. I can think of right now. How mm-hmm. does the dynamic, how does the dynamic, how does the... Well, I suppose dynamic is how does how does how, how is it play using the bow and arrow? Is it is it good? Have they done it well? Yeah, yeah, they've done it well. Uh, you can mostly think of it as probably your silence weapon instead of having like a uh, silence rifle. You have the bow and arrow. That's good. Mm-hmm. That's the best way I can put it. You use it for your stealth kills and whatnot. Other than that, ah, okay. your typical bow and arrow. Uh, the hunting aspect, what they kind of played up, was not as big as it is in the game. Though I did mm-hmm. spend a little bit of time just killing a bunch of chickens to get an achievement. But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tastes like chicken. Great. Uh, <laughs> but, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's good. You can even shoot birds and whatnot in there, so it's fun. Good, good. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you have another game for this week? Um, well, well, I've already said, you know, I'm still playing Borderlands 2 as my LPs, so, uh, but I've said that every week now for the past four weeks, I think. Um, but I will say that I really want to start playing uh, a third Let's Play, Mm -hmm. but, you know, timing is this big thing, but I Mm -hmm. really, really want to, because I want to play something like, something else big, like Borderlands 2, Mm -hmm. that I've already played before, you know, something I'm already familiar with, so, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm... Might want to save yeah. that for the uh, shameless self promotion if you want to name it. To. Yeah. So yeah, I'll save that just for the same shameless <laughs> self promotion. I will. <laughs> that point. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other game that I've been playing a lot this week, especially this weekend, has been uh, PlayStation All Stars Battle Royale. <laughs> I finally gave in and I picked it up, and I gotta say, I've been having a blast with the game. Yeah. It's actually really good. <laughs> Have you by any chance been playing a lot as uh, Lara Croft's long lost older brother? Who is? Nathan Trace. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, I just, <laughs> I actually just did his uh, arcade mode before we started recording the podcast. Hey, well, there you go then. <laughs> Nathan's pretty cool. I mean, he's got one attack where uh, if you push down in circle, uh barrier will actually erect in front of him. So you're doing cover <laughs> <page> shooting. <laughs> Brilliant. I like yeah. it. He's got some crazy moves, like he'll kick an oil drum at people, or if you jump up into the air and hit I think it's down circle, a collapsed roof will actually appear below him and fall down on top of the enemies. <laughs> so they, they've, done, really like it. Yeah, they've done well for integrating moves like that. Yeah. Uh, mostly I've been using, uh, Raiden, though. Uh, really? Yeah. It actually works quite well in the game. Uh, I suppose you would do, wouldn't you? It's that kind of character. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. But, yeah, I, I kind of wish the character selection was a little more varied, though. Uh, they've got some more DLC, as we've announced before in the past. I think we announced it in the past. Did mm-hmm. we cover that? Um, that Isaac Clark and Zeus do it like second. Did we announce that Isaac Clark and Zeus was coming? I'm not sure if we did that on the podcast. No, 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 it doesn't ring a bell. So if we did, we didn't even length because it doesn't ring yeah. a bell. Okay, yeah. Well, those two are coming, and there's two other characters via DLC as well. Um, Cat from Gravity Rush and uh, the guy from the Star Hot game. Hmm. But, yeah, the game's great, and uh, I love the environments as well, the way they mashed up, like, two games in each environment. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've I've been seeing this, yeah. 
mm-hmm. and some let's plays. It looks good. Mm-hmm. I'd recommend it, and it looks like it's going to be an easy platinum as well. I'm just a few trophies mm-hmm. off from it now. <laughs> Hopefully, I will get that soon. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, that kind of wraps up our bin playing section. Mm-hmm. So, uh, on the topic of now, what we've been watching this week in terms of movies and TV shows. The and Jester, I believe you have our uh, zombie movie of the week. Zombie movie of the week, which actually hasn't happened every week we've been doing this, so it's kind of a <laughs> weird title. Um, but I'm going to try. I'm going to try to actually start doing this now because I love zombie films, so I may as well. I want to share them with the world. No, um, this is actually yesterday, or possibly early yesterday morning, because of late night. Uh, I watched a little film by the name of State of Emergency. Now it's uh, a pretty sure it was a straight to DVD zombie movie. Uh, so you know they're not always the greatest films in the world. You know, not on par with your Zombie Lands and your Dawn of the Deads and all that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But even so. It was plugged as the best zombie film of 2012, which, fair enough, not a hard thing to do when there weren't that many <laughs> zombie films in 2012, mm-hmm. but it is actually pretty good. It's got good pace for the budget it has. It's got good makeup, good story going, good actors. You know, mm-hmm. none of the guys that you can't get any emotion out of kind of thing. There's one very noticeable face, but I can't remember her name. <laughs> and find it on the fucking box. I fell asleep during credits. Um, uh, I can't remember the name at all. Um, the one disappointing thing, you don't actually see that many zombies. <laughs> it's only like one at a time. <laughs> okay. Which is, you know. But And also, there's a big scene at the beginning. The, your main hero is fighting off a zombie. It's the first zombie he meets. He doesn't know what it is. And he's got his rifle by his side. And he fires his gun. And you're thinking, oh, this is going to be great. The most feeble gun sound I've ever heard. <laughs> it, was, it was like, I'm expecting this. Kakao! And all I got was a pop. <laughs> it was a bit anticlimactic, mm-hmm. but it didn't ruin the rest of the film. The film was still good. Goodness. And the gun sounds did get better later on in the film. So that was why that bit was so piss poor. Mm-hmm. But all in all, a good film. Very interesting take on the whole thing. Hmm. It turned out to be, you know, a, a neurotoxin that the government had created itself and had, and had escaped when something had malfunctioned and all that kind of stuff, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, but it was good. It was good. It was a good film. Oh, right on. That's good to hear. So, people out there, if you like zombie movies, check State out... States of Emergency. There you go. Uh, movie-wise, for me this week, uh, yesterday as well, oddly enough, I, uh, Rewatched Dread, which is absolutely fantastic, and <laughs> was so underrated when it came out yeah. in theaters. Still needs to catch this film, actually. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's by far better than the Sylvester Stallone one <laughs> from years ago. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, it's exactly Carl, yeah. Carl Urban, uh, who people out there might know as Bones in the new Star Trek movies. Uh, yeah. He played Dread in the movie, and uh, yeah, fantastic job by the actor. Uh, this is a dark and gritty movie. Lots of mm-hmm. blood, lots of people dying, plenty of explosions. Uh, so, so there should be. Mm-hmm. So yeah, uh, any comic book fan out there, I'd highly recommend Dread. Go pick it up on DVD. Or Blu-ray, uh, support them so that we can get a sequel because yeah, they yes. deserve it. Is that in the works? Is, is that something they're planning? Was it not just a one-off? Uh, they haven't really said. So hmm. yeah. There's the last one. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, now something that we can both talk about since you've caught up with the series. I watched this weekend's this morning in preparation. The Walking Dead. Yay! <laughs> and for those of you who haven't watched season three, spoiler alert right now. Oh, yeah. We won't yeah. hold back. Run away and don't come back until you've watched it. Yeah. <laughs> Pause. Go watch all 
what, 13 episodes so far? And then come yep. back. <laughs> Probably four um, by the time this is up. <laughs> Probably. <Yeah>. Um, <laughs> Uh, no, uh, man. I mean, it's. I don't know why it took me so long to get back into it because, you know, like I said, like I said last time, I recorded the first one thinking, oh, I'll watch it the next day because I was working that night, mm. and then it just started rolling over, you know, a cascade effect. I just had to recording them all and not watching them. Finally, sat down to watch them all in one day. <laughs> oh, and, nice. Oh, God, it was the best day ever. <laughs> <laughs> And it has not disappointed. I mean, I've read the comics or graphic novels, whatever you want to call them, mm-hmm. and I am, I mean, and I love the first two series, despite the fact that they did kind of stray away from the comics. Mm-hmm. But I was so happy to see that nearly everything that has happened in this season seems to be pushing, not all the way, but of the way back towards the story in the comics you know i mean fair enough it means you've lost a load of characters Mm -hmm. that you wouldn't have otherwise lost and there are still some still hanging around that shouldn't be Mm -hmm. or didn't exist otherwise but even so i'm I'm so glad that it's not it's not like it's a deal breaker if they haven't but i'm glad they you know brought it back to the story in the comics i'm really glad about that Mm mm-hmm yeah, they've done a uh, fantastic job this season. I mean, mm. by far better than season two. A lot more action, a lot more fast-paced. Um, oh. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, me and Big Boss last week, we went over pretty much the season and the, the episode from not last Sunday, but the Sunday before. And uh, that was great. But uh, why don't we spend a little bit of time talking about uh, the last episode that came out, where we saw the oh, return yes. of a very particular character. Oh, yeah. Which I mean... Morgan. Mm-hmm. Morgan. Uh, and man, <laughs> he has changed quite a bit. Oh, yeah. I mean, have, you, have you read the comics? I have read volume one. I'm still behind. You read volume one, so... I think that's what the first five or six books is. I've got them all individually. Yeah, so. yeah. And, well, later on in the series, actually, should I spoil the book series for you? I don't care. <laughs> okay. Um, later on in the series, in the anybody who's interested in reading the graphic novels but has watched the series and still is still what, listening at this point, if you don't want to read the comics, well, you, you may well back away for a few minutes now. Um, <laughs> later on in the series of the no- in the graphic in the uh, comics, there we go. Um, we do meet Morgan again as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. And the same thing has happened. He's lost his son, and it is upsetting the way it's same in the series. But what's worse in the comics is that he's keeping his son as a zombie. Oh, so he, he kind of went the him. same route as the governor then. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and on that note. Governor is pretty much living up to all expectations from the uh, comics for the <laughs> most part as well. Um, but so yeah, uh, so I mean in the series obviously we don't see Dwayne, but uh, any assumption is that you know Dwayne died and that's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it doesn't look like he's keeping well, yeah. the bodies of anybody yeah. <laughs> now. Oh, yeah, just does it now. He's burning them all. Um, so yeah, so it's uh, I mean I felt so sorry for Morgan because it just brought back all those memories of how sorry I felt for him when I was reading the series as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm hoping he comes back into it a bit more again as well, and he's not just going to be in this one episode, because he does come into it for a while in the series as well. Mm-hmm. Um, well I so I'm hoping he shows his face again. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. I think they said that the actor playing Morgan's actually quite busy, <laughs> which is why... Uh, well, I suppose, yeah, he's, get him. he's one of those faces that you don't always remember the name of, but you see him in a lot of stuff, I suppose, actually, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I can imagine that. Yeah, I think anyway. uh, I think I was reading that he was actually supposed to make a return in season two, but they couldn't get him, so they had to wait yeah. for season three. <laughs> I've heard that as well. Yeah. But in but the no, end, I think they did it very. Well. Hmm? But I said, but in the end, it worked. That episode oh, was yeah. fantastic. It was really well done. Yeah, it was a very good episode. Mm-hmm. I don't know um, about you, but I would probably consider that one of the best episodes they've done throughout any of the seasons so far. 
Yeah, actually. Yeah, no, yeah. I think I'd agree with you there. I think because it had, you know, the good balance of having everything in it. I mean, like, this series has obviously been a lot more action, like you say. Mm -hmm. But they've had the benefit there of having people as enemies as well. Mm -hmm. On top of the zombies. And in previous series, it's all been about the emotion of them surviving and all that kind of thing. And Mm -hmm. in this episode, they kind of had both. Yep. In a really good mix. Uh, Mm -hmm. There's the action of of them going against each other, then there was the emotion of who survived what or hasn't survived what, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, It was was a very good episode. Yep. It was a nice little uh, wake-up call for Rick Mm -hmm. as well. I mean, like, we've seen him being uh, slipping this whole season and going Mm -hmm. towards this, like, place where, like, you figure, well, he's going to break up, he's going to be on his own because he's going nuts. Then he goes and he sees Morgan in this kind of state, and you kind of see that he's realizing, like, he can't go that route. He, he's he got to stick with the group, and he's got to keep his senses about him. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. I mean, the episode it, it, title was called Clear, so... <laughs> oh, yeah. I thought it was very clever use of the word as well. The whole, I was I was looking at the writing on that wall thinking, what, is, what does clear mean? But then when he actually finally started saying it over and over again, it kind of, kind of clocked. It's like he means he's got to clear things up. Mm-hmm. That's pretty clever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the way he's been kind of like expanding out his barrier <laughs> there. Yeah. So it's like he's sitting in one position, and what he means by clear is clear the world of the zombie stuff by taking out everyone that comes towards him kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Quite like it was a really good sort of subtle hint at that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I like this little comment to Rick as well, like, uh, your son's going to die, they're going to die, all the good people die, even the bad people die too. Yeah. But it's the people the like The Kevin Harris in the earth, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good paraphrase, that, actually, yeah. Mm-hmm. The weak have inherited the world. The ones, they're the ones being punished. Mm-hmm. Oof. I like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was well done. And then we had the little side story there, too, in the episode with uh, Michonne and Carol, which was Carl, <laughs> yeah. which was great. Oh, God, Michonne, fantastic casting. Yes. Yeah, and we Absolutely finally fantastic. got to see some more emotion from her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that too as well. But to be fair, you don't really see that much from her in the comics <laughs> up until that point anyway. Yeah. So that fit anyway, for me, at least. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> the, the, the comment about the cat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, that was great. Uh, she goes back in, she goes around the back, and I'm expecting to hear slash, slice, slash, slash. And it's like two yeah. seconds and she's back with the picture and a cat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, I mean, she had some great humorous moments in there too, especially when she was she sat did. down eating Morgan's food. Rick was like, we're yeah. eating his food now, and she was like, the mat said welcome. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it's was great good. to finally get to see some more from her, aside from just yeah. brooding and being all rawr. Oh, yeah, yeah. But you can now see her now as part of the group. I mean, Carl yep. even said it at the end to Rick, like, I think she's one of us. <laughs> Oh, and it, it, everything was so good at that point. You know, you were being left in this nice, happy mood at the end of the episode. Something you don't get very often with no. like, The Walking Dead, if ever. And they had to go and ruin it. And I'm not complaining because it's still fixed and it was still good. They had to go and ruin it, and driving past that guy's body. Yeah. So, and so taking still... his back. <laughs> I was just waiting. <laughs> so they still left out a humorous mood as they came back and picked up the backpack. I suppose, yeah, there was a little bit of slaps. Well, not slapstick, but yeah, so, so, yeah, good point. But, God, <laughs> kind of still sort of dropped the mood a bit. Mm. <laughs> uh, the music in the episode was great, too. Yeah, very yeah. much so. So, yeah, can't wait for tonight's episode, which starts in an hour, so yay. Oh, God, so it does. Mm-hmm. Wait, I know we've got a different, don't we? Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're... You see, on our TV, on our on the channel we get it on, right? They tell us we're getting it like an hour after you guys or something like that, or just yeah. a few hours after you guys. I think we're also a week behind. <laughs> <laughs> because I watched that one today, and I'm pretty sure that recorded on Friday. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, so I think we're a week behind you guys still as well, but I might have to double check that. Mm. Yeah, looking forward to tonight's episode and see where things go. I mean... Uh, 
there was a preview shown from last week that uh, Rick's going to sit down with the governor. Mm. So, yeah, wonder how that's going to go. <laughs> well, I suppose <sighs> knowing the comic series, uh, not well. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I think I know where we're going with this. Rick being a little one-handed, maybe? Quite possibly. Although I'd be surprised if they end up doing that, given that they've already done that with Merle. Mm-hmm. Oh, and how about Merle, since you weren't here last week, me and BB had this talk. Uh, well, Merle's had a drastic change in the past couple I... of episodes. Mm. Well, yeah, I drag- oh, I think, um, uh, yeah, I mean... It's kind of, that's, that's kind of a difficult one to say. Um, he's not so much had a drastic change, it's so much the fact that he's just that kind of guy mm-hmm. that, you know, latches onto the winning side, or, you know, yeah. well, whatever side will take him anyway. <laughs> I don't know, I think he had a bit like of a got... changing moment when he saw the uh, scars on the back of Daryl's back. Oh, I suppose, yeah, because I think there's a big hint there that their father was abusive, wasn't there? Mm-hmm. Or something along those lines. Yeah. So, yeah, my good point. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, no question he's always been loyal to Daryl. Mm-hmm. So I suppose that's, yeah, fair point. I can see mm-hmm. that, yeah. Yeah. Um, and there was that little scene with Herschel in an episode where that was a great moment between Herschel and uh, Merle, I thought, though, so anyway, where they were uh, quoting uh, the Bible. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was good. That was pretty good, yeah. Not to mention they're the two... Uh, <laughs> Uh, what's the word? Uh, I can't really know. You know, having lost like a limb, para. Yeah. Um, amputees. Yeah, amputees. Both of them. We're in common. <laughs> I wonder if Merle will build Herschel a uh, weird spiky metal glove thing <laughs> <laughs> for his legs. For, yeah, no, 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 probably not. <laughs> a killing peg leg. I don't like it. <laughs> Just give him hey, a shot. why not? Yeah, just give him the yeah, gun. Just like, oh. carry his coach around, knock a zombie over, and then just stand on it. <laughs> <laughs> True. Maybe they like a rich peg leg. Maybe they could give the Herschel the gun leg from Planet Terror. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> why not? <laughs> All right. Uh, I think that wraps up our been reading. I've ah, been watching section. So we can yeah, probably, move, on probably our, section. move on to our Ben reading one. Uh, mm. I'll get my name of the way first because it'll be a short one. Uh, today, I actually read the first issue of Age of Ultron, something that Woo! we talked about in a previous podcast. Mm-hmm. And I have to say, fantastic read. I mean, I surely hope so, yeah. It jumped right into the action right away. Uh, you get a little bit of hint of the story, but, uh, yeah, it was a nice little first issue. You can see that the world has gone to shit. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, definitely gone to shit. <laughs> uh, <so laughs> the stars of this one was pretty much Hawkeye and Spider-Man, with Hawkeye oh. rescuing Spider-Man from the likes of Hammerhead and the Owl. Oh, very good. And then you get to see, like, some of the heroes that have survived and the kind of living situation that they're in at the moment. And, mm. yeah, it, it's not good. Uh, yeah. I know bits and pieces of what the story is supposed to entail, because I follow Marvel on Twitter. Marvel fan, I just don't have much time for reading comics that much anymore recently, unfortunately. So what is it actually that's happening? I mean, obviously, it's Ultron taking over. Mm-hmm. But what has actually happened that is, you know, left that there's only so many survivors or, you know, all this kind of stuff? What's actually happened? They really haven't said. I mean, uh, just spoiler alert here. Do you oh, so you actually literally are thrown right in the middle of it. Yeah, yeah. Like, Ooh. this looks like a future situation right now. New York right, is, like, okay. completely devastated. Uh, wow. You have this, like, massive, like, structure that looks like Ultron's headquarters. Um, Hawkeye takes Spider-Man out towards what looks like the harbor and a uh, down helicarrier. Mm. 
and they get confronted by She-Hulk and Tony Stark and Luke huh. Cage, who pretty much grab them right off the bat and say, like, we told you not to come back to Hawkeye. Tony scans the two of them, finds out that Ultron hasn't done anything to them, so they come on in. Hawkeye's talking about, like, he's not going to give up on being a hero <laughs> or anything like that. <laughs> like, he's not going to... Yeah, he's not going to, like, just cave in. If, like, one of them gets captured, he's going to do something about it. He's not going to say, like, oh, well, they're gone. Oh, oh well, I, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, do you care about spoilers at the end of the... Oh, no, no. no. Not so. Well, right at the end there, Hawkeye's talking with, uh, Tony. And Tony's like, uh, well, we don't have a plan or anything. And Hawkeye's like, well, <laughs> is anybody thinking on anything? And it's like, uh, Tony's like, well, he's thinking on a plan. Next thing you know, Hawkeye's like, is that what you call it? And the last page is a picture of Captain America sat down with his arms folded across his knees and his head down. <laughs> it's Ooh. Like, yeah, it's like Cap completely out of it, like looking really depressed, you can't see his face or anything, but, Good gosh. yeah, it's like, Cap is just out of it, sat down, away from the rest of the group, just out of it. <laughs> Jeez, wow. Yeah, it's, it's pretty bleak <laughs> for a first day. <laughs> well, I suppose anything called Age of Ultron can only be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, I'm looking forward to it, I mean... I haven't been able to keep up with comics as much as I'd like to recently. Yeah. I picked up a ton of issues and whatnot, but that's been my case since I was 15. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anything at the moment with Age of Ultron attached to it, I think I may have to read because yeah. this issue starting off has been it's it took me. It really mm. has, and I've loved Ultron as a character in the past. You know this. <laughs> So yeah, I'm Next looking. Time. So I'm looking forward to where they take this story. All right, that that does it for me. Uh, you have another book for us this week. I do. Uh, from a few podcasts ago, you remember I was reading Gone, uh, a novel by Michael Grant, part of the series. Um, I'm now on to I've actually started Hunger Now, which is the second in the series. And true to form, it is bleak and morbid in such an, a strangely riveting way. <laughs> so, well, in, as I've explained before, it's a, it's a, a world, or rather just a town, mm-hmm. where it's only people who are 14 and under, save a couple. Um, and it's, it's just, it's the way that it just does not hold anything back in what would actually happen in that kind of situation. You've got little kids with no parents. The only people to take care of them are 14-year-olds who, as soon as 15, are likely to disappear. You know, I mean, we know why they're disappearing now, but some of them are still doing it just to escape the bleak horribleness of having to live in this place Mm -hmm. alone. But, but yeah, it's just, uh, I mean, it's it's fantastic. It's a brilliant book. Mm -hmm. if, if, If you're... If you're not the type to really enjoy a, a story where there's no holds barred on how horrible things can go, and it's, it's bordering on cruelty, mm. but it's what would happen to these kids if this situation happened. If you're kind of that's not going to enjoy that kind of thing, I would advise you stay away. <laughs> it's bordering at times, mm. but if you're willing to look through that and actually just have a really good read, go for it. It's a fantastic book. It's a bit, I did not expect it to be as good as it was, and the first one, and it was so good. And this one, so far, lived up to all expectations. Nice, nice. Seems like we have a trend going for this week. Bleak and despair, it looks like. Yeah. <laughs> good point. <laughs> well, I think I have a title <sighs> name for this episode. <laughs> all right, well, I... Definitely want to try and check out that book at some point. Uh, Definitely Mm -hmm. have to look for it. That one and gone. I mean, it also involves people developing superpowers as well. So it's definitely right up our alley. Mm -hmm. Straight away there as well. Nice, nice. 
Well, Jester, you want to lead us into our final segment? Yeah. Now we have, boys and girls, our shameless self-promotion, and I said it right that time. Yay. Um, <laughs> now, I, 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 it's a good thing I'm starting this one, because I pretty much already halfway leaked my self-promotion. Anyway, as I've said, I've finished the Prince of Persia Sands of Time. You'll probably get the last episode of that on Tuesday, Wednesday, I think, is the way it's going to end up lining up. Uh, and then I'll be starting Warrior Within. There's going to be a day break. And with no Prince of Persia, and then we'll start and see where Warrior Within, just, you know, just, and, uh, so that's Warrior Within coming soon, Prince of Persia still, in the Prince of Persia series, I'm still playing Borderlands 2, um, it's a fantastic game, I'm really enjoying playing it, the only problem is I'm not finding time to actually sit down and play it as much as I really <laughs> want to. Oh, no, the woe of really a gamer. Me. I know. Uh, work's been a bastard recently. <laughs> um, other than that, as I said before, I do want to start a third one, which is probably a really bad idea. Yeah, considering I'm not playing Borderlands 2 as much as I should be. But, you know, I've just got that itch in me to play another game. Mm-hmm. You know, so... And it's a, it's a toss-up between something like Fallout 3 and Skyrim, or maybe just doing something dead quick and simple that can go out in quick episodes as well, you know, because that's, mm-hmm. you know, that's still playing something, that's still getting something out there. So, who knows? I'm not actually decided yet. Maybe you guys can give me a vote. You know, something between Fallout 3, Skyrim... Uh, Hotline Miami, They Bleed Pixels, Mark the Ninja, or anything else you can think of, you know. Um, and other than that, to actually plug something that I don't think I've plugged that hard before in a podcast, but I really should do, because it's actually the only reason I started my YouTube channel <laughs> to begin with, is to advertise. I am actually primarily a writer, or at least I'm trying to be. Now, for a long time now, since August 2012... I have been we- releasing weekly episodes of a story involving a character that X actually knows very well from something else. Mm-hmm. And that series is called Blaze. And it's the origin story of a kid who becomes, later on in life, a hero. So anybody who's familiar with the character, and if you look into it, you'll be able to find out stuff about him from other sites that I've had him on. Uh, it's his origin story, or this version of his origin story. But other than that, last weekend, when I wasn't able to attend for the podcast, I actually started a second title over on my Jester Conceptions blog. The address is jesterconceptions.blogspot.co.uk, by the way, um, called The Hunters, which is a story idea I've had from when I was dead little. I'm really glad, you know, it's evolved over the years. You know, something written by a five-year-old that I'm just releasing. Uh, and it's... I'm really glad I've, I've managed to get it to a point now where I'm kind of confident to release it and hope I'm doing it <laughs> well. Because <laughs> it's the, an idea really close to my heart, involving you know, monsters, demons, mm-hmm. you know, my version of the truth of heaven and hell and all that kind of stuff, you know. It's not really heaven and hell and all that kind of stuff, you know. That's why I say it's my version. So, but, you know, it's that kind of thing, you know. It's a very supernatural kind of thing. So if you're into that kind of thing, go over and check it out. That's what I'm doing these days. Cool beans. I've got a couple little things this week about my own channel. Uh, first off, uh, my Transformers War for Cybertron Let's Play is finally nearing its end. Uh, I believe I have four more episodes to upload starting tonight, or it could be three. I'm not sure at the moment. Wait, I think mm-hmm. it's three because I uploaded 41 last night. Yeah, I have three more episodes of that to upload. So Ooh. with the uh, Transformers ending, I will start uploading Spec Ops The Line. Woo! <laughs> Which uh, I'm actually looking forward to seeing, it, do, to seeing you do it. I really am. <laughs> I'm interested in it. <laughs> Well, I've actually been playing Double Down on the game because I've been playing on PS3 to experience the story <laughs> myself, and I've been recording the PC version for my Let's Play. Yeah. Uh, I've got dedication. Yeah. <laughs> so I've got uh, two episodes ready to go, both of which will be uploaded in HD. Uh, yeah. So you can look forward to that starting up some point this week. I'm not exactly sure when. Uh, most likely the day after Transformers. But aside from that, uh, last week on the podcast, I mentioned that I'm going to be bringing back more indie game Let's Plays to my channel. Uh, stuff such as 
Um, I'm trying to think now. I've done Super Meat Boy. I've done Limbo. I've got a ton of indie games on Steam, uh, a lot of which I've bought off uh, Humble Indie Bundles, which there's another one up right now, which I bought. (laughs) So I got a few more. (laughs) But uh, the first of which that I've started recording, uh, episode length is going to be around seven to eight minutes each because, again, I want to upload these in HD. And the first game that I've started doing is Mark of the Ninja. Hey. Yeah. Uh, I've actually never played the game before I started recording. Well, I did a little test run before I did recording, but uh, I've been really enjoying the game thus far. And what I'm going to... Mm-hmm. It has been really fun, yeah. And uh, what I'm going to do with this series, though, is I'm going to try and get it recorded first all of the episodes before I start uploading so even though I have yeah you know, even though I have like three episodes right now ready to go and upload I'm gonna hold back yet uh, I might start uploading once I hit around like 10 15 episodes just so I know that I can have it uploading constantly without any delays because that's yeah. what I want to do for this game for any of my indie Let's Plays that I'm going to be doing in the future. So, yeah, you can look forward to Mark of the Ninja, hopefully starting soon. Uh, Hmm. At the latest, maybe the end of this month, the beginning of April. So that's what I'm shooting for. Good times. Now, on that point, just uh, to get your opinion on something, actually, and possibly the opinion of the audience, um, recording all them at once and and then releasing them, Mm-hmm. I, that's how I tend to do my Let's Plays in general. I sit down, play for as long as I can play for, mm-hmm. and then split that up. Now, I've heard mixed reviews on whether, you know, audiences like that kind of approach, or if they prefer to have, you know, set beginnings and ends to each episode. What's your opinion on that? Uh, I found it kind of mixed between the two. Uh, I've mm. tried doing it before in the past. It seems fine. But uh, if you're going to try and, like, record and upload, record and upload. I think it's almost best yeah. to do it for a game that where you can really put user feedback into it. Like, yeah. right now with my Skyrim Let's Play, I'm really imploring people to tell me what to do and where to go. Ah, uh, yeah. Skyrim, Good point. Oh, couldn't point. Like, uh, Skyrim is, like, so open that I can go and pretty much do whatever I can waste. Ten episodes, I'm yeah. just blocking, <laughs> really. Yeah. So, Good point. Yeah, and as far as, like, Spec Ops The Line goes, I'm going to try and record, like, two, three episodes at a time just so I can get some feedback on those while I'm doing it. Because the game does have choice. Yeah. And on that matter, if, uh... Well, there is two ways I can go and play that game from what I've seen thus far from playing it, and that, uh... I can either play... As a good soldier, doing what's right and everything. Or I can cross the line and be an absolute asshole. So, I believe (laughs) I mentioned in my first episode that uh, if people want to make suggestions on what I can do, feel free to vote down in the comments. Indeed, and I believe I shall. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, it really is a game... If you're going to record, then upload, record, then upload, I'd say uh, go for a game that does have that kind of choice involved. If it ah, does, enough. if it doesn't, well, I say do what you're doing now and record as much as you can so you can yeah. have like episodes to put up regularly. Yeah, we well, see exactly. Yeah, that's it. Seems to be working. I mean, that way so far because it means I can actually you know optimize my time in chunks mm-hmm. rather than trying to split it up too much. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you decide to do something like a uh, weekly series, you can probably do, like, record and upload, then Mm. wait and record and then upload. Yeah. Like, for example, if you're going to do Fallout 3, like you said, maybe do, like, a uh, twice a week with Fallout. That way people can give you feedback on what you should do or shouldn't do. Yeah. Very good point. Like, I mean, that's Thank you very much for your wise and sage advice, X. And actually, I'm not being sarcastic there. <laughs> I realise that actually probably sounded a little bit sarcastic, but it's just the British in me. Well, you're welcome. Definitely. <laughs> actually, that's very good advice. 
<laughs> so yeah, I'd suggest that, especially like try doing some weekly series if you're uh, yeah stretched on time. Indeed, good times. All right then. So that pretty much wraps up that section. Uh, as per usual, guys, uh, if you have any questions or comments for us, feel free to leave them down in the comments section below. Uh, ask us anything you want, and feel free to ask us anything on Twitter as well. Our uh, Twitter names, as usual, are up on the screen. And Big Boss, even though he's not here this week, you can reach out to him on Twitter at the highwind underscore 32. Go and bug him with questions, especially since he wasn't here this week. <laughs> and I'm, I'm okay. Yep. And I have one other thing here before we wrap up this week. Uh, I've got a few codes for some games on Steam, uh, which are. Let me just double check them right now. One of which oh, is. Yeah. Sorry, go on. Yeah. One of which is a uh, Beat Hazard Ultra. And the other one is Dungeon Defenders with all DLC. So what I'm thinking about is maybe doing a little contest here. And I really don't like doing contests to attract subscribers. I think that's lame and idiotic (laughs) because you're just going to get a bunch of useless people subscribing to you just to get free shit. So what I'm thinking about is uh, if you guys – Leave a question or comment this week uh, on next week's episode. We may give out a free game to you. Very nice. Yeah, so please, a uh, reason to uh, leave a question or comment down below. You could get yeah, either. And uh, what are the games you've got on offer again? Uh, Beat Hazard Ultra, which is a uh, music-based game. Mm-hmm. And then the other one is Dungeon Defenders, plus all the DLC. Oh, very nice. Now, you've, uh, you have you saying this has actually reminded me. I've actually got in my uh, items list on Steam 18 gifts, which I assume are just sort of invites, mm-hmm. uh, to Dota 2, which I could also act to add to the mix if mm-hmm. need be. But I, my understanding is they're quite prevalent anyway. But, you know, they're there for grabs if anybody wants them. Nice, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they seem to give out those a lot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one of our friends, Rocket Raccoon, is always complaining yeah. that he has even more <laughs> invites. Yeah, yeah. When I mean, they gave me ten, I gave two away because I only have two friends on Steam. <laughs> so I just sent them. Uh, <laughs> it's actually you and Mega Rocket Raccoon, <laughs> even though you both, I think, probably already have it. Yep. Uh, but it's an interesting game. It's kind of just like a crappier version of League of Legends at the minute, but I understand it's in its beta, I think, isn't it? So yeah, yeah. But anybody, if anybody wants them, you can add. If if you know if you don't, you know you'll, you'll need to add me onto uh, Steam or I'll add you whichever way around you want to go, and we'll figure that out. Mhm. Well, there you go. So guys, that's a reason to leave questions and comments down below for Indeed. us this week. And remember, you can ask us anything, or well, just about anything, and we'll answer. I would probably answer anything. (laughs) You may want to, you know, actually field your questions based on YouTube's terms of service. (laughs) (laughs) All right, then. Well, Jester, I do believe that uh, does it for this week. Does indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, we have laughed and we have cried, most notably about Megan Fox. And fucking TMNT. Um, <laughs> it's been fun. Thanks for listening to us, guys. As ever, I have been just Gar13, and he has been Lord X. Uh, and unfortunately, Big Boss could not be with us this week, but I'm sure he sends you all his best, and you should go and send you him all your best as well. But otherwise, thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>